Thank you so much. We are here to provide a little more detail about the plan. I'm Kendall Andreg with Mutual Materials and past chair of ICPI. I'm Dean Jurek, Vice President of Sales and Marketing for ACM Chemistries and uh, a member of both NCMA and ICPI. And I should have added that I am also on the NCMA board, so our organization is also members of both. The two associations have more in common than different. There's a piece in the middle that we've all seen, the, the center of the Venn diagram, that are the pieces that we share as associations and member companies. But even those pieces along the side are really shared in many cases too. Many ICPI members also make concrete masonry or segmental retaining walls and vice versa. A lot of NCMA members also make concrete pavers. So while as it may look like there are differences in addition to those similarities, really the two associations as a whole, again, have more in common than difference. Yeah, Kendall, I would add too that, you know, it's important for us as a, a possible future organization uh, that encompasses both groups is that we look after the things where we don't overlap as well. So we're going to make sure that those things don't fall through the crack and when we're focusing mainly on the things where we overlap. Absolutely. So why unification? The members, the benefits that members value most are strengthened through unification. So the biggest benefit that I think we all speak to is expanding market growth, really expanding our market share as an industry. But when you look at all these different areas and all the various member categories, there are benefits that are unique to all of us. And I think the key when we're looking at this piece is as a member group, you can see benefits, you know, for all of us individually that may you know, me be of more value to one of us than another. So one company may say, oh, wow, the networking benefits are really important to me. And another company may say, no, government advocacy is really important to me. Mm -hmm. But again, when you look at this as a whole, everyone can kind of see the value and the benefits to them individually. And again, to all of us as an industry. Yeah, and Kendall, I'm glad you brought up networking. I think that's always been one of the number one uh, things that people point out as uh, highlights of organizational meetings and the way the, the organization works. And the more that we build that strength, we increase not only our ability to work with each other, but to market, to better market our products to the industry and certainly build off of uh, our relationships with each other. And grow the industry as a whole. There you go. So governance, I know, is something that people think about, right? This is something that's important to all of us. As we look at the proposed governance structure, what you see at the top here is members. So we are a member-driven organization. Both NCMA and ICPI are currently member-driven associations, and that will not change with a unified association. As a member-driven organization, we delegate that authority to that next level, the board of directors, to make decisions and kind of continue to guide the industry and guide the association and move things forward. We've determined that the best path for governance for the association is to have individual market segment committees. So one will be for masonry, what will include CMU and MSB, and one will be for hardscapes that includes SRW and papers. And of course, there will be a variety of standing committees, government affairs, education, and so on, that will support both these segments as well as the association as a whole. There will also be advisory committees that, you know, not necessarily standing committees, but different pieces and policies and initiatives that the association decides they want to move forward and support that will be appointed by the board of directors. Yeah, and the goal really here is to make sure that, again, every segment is represented, uh, both that had been priorly in NCMA or in ICPI, and make sure that there is a representation that is equal, uh, not only to maybe U.S. members, but Canadian members as well. So we're looking after the needs of really all of the membership. And I'm really glad you brought up the fact that we want to make sure that all member categories are represented, Dean, because I think this is a really good representation of that very issue right here. 
So this is uh, kind of a broad overview of what the board makeup will look at, look like. The leadership development committee that you saw on the previous slide is the group that is going to be selecting the board. The initial leadership development committee will have six members from both ICPI and NCMA led by the past chairs of both associations that will collectively determine that first unified board of directors. And again, as Dean said, you can take a look at this and you can see that the leadership development committee does have targets for those individual uh, member categories on the board. There will be representation from contractors, representation from associates, and of course, representation from producers. But again, the intent is to ensure that all regions, all member categories, all the various groups that make up our two associations and will make up our unified association, ultimately at the end of the day, have representation and participation on the board. And the, the idea really here is, is, as Kendall said, to try to make this board as representative of our industry as possible, but also to search for the most efficient and effective board members to fill those seats, not just to fill them uh, because we need to have someone from this or, or that category. So the idea really is to have, again, the most professional board that we can put forward and representing the most segments that we can. Absolutely. So this graphic kind of walks through the member categories of the Unified Association. And again, where you see yourself is a member category that would transition into the new association. So for example, if you're a paper producer, you would transition into the producer category. Likewise, if you're a producer on the NCMA side, you would also transition to that category. So all current members of ICPI and NCMA will be transitioned into those relevant member, relevant member categories for the Unified Association. Members, of course, will have the opportunity to review and evaluate new membership categories and transfer to a different category if that's appropriate. As we looked at the dues structure, the intent was to generate similar revenue, but not more, than the current combined NCMA and ICPI dues. We wanted to ensure that we were minimizing impacts on individual members, and the dues group took a lot of time to really do their due diligence, reach out to members to make sure that we were minimizing impact as much as possible. We really wanted to create a simplified structure that is fair and equitable to all members. The new due structure, as I said, was created through a data-driven approach. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, some dues may go up, some dues may go down. The intent was never to raise dues on anyone, but I think when you as members are looking at dues, what you want to think about is, are they fair and are, getting, are you getting value for the dues you pay? Ultimately, if there are members with a dues increase, the dues committee determined that that increase will be phased in over a three year period. So nobody will be hit with a dues increase immediately. And it's, it's important to remember in this whole process that any voting member, no matter what category, can be on the board. It can also be in leadership positions with the organization. So uh, those two things exist now no matter what category you're in, as long as you're a voting member, you have the opportunity to take on leadership roles in this organization. So this is a calculator that um, staff from the associations put together that will be sent out and members will have the opportunity to kind of take a look at. So you can easily calculate your dues um, on the unification website. You can plug in what you're currently paying, what your kind of current status is, and you can see what it will look like in a unified association. I think this is a tool that will be really helpful as members are kind of evaluating the process, you know, to understand what do those dues look like under the new unified association. So staffing, of course, is something that's important to all of us. We have great staff with both associations, and we really want to make sure that that transition is handled smoothly. Um, recommendations on staffing have been approved by both the boards. At this point, we have recommended that Bob Thomas will be CEO of the new association. 
Bob's been with NCMA for 31 years, including the last 13 as its president. And then Mary Beth Hall will be the COO. Mary Beth has served as a director of education and workforce development for ICPI for the past three years. You know, having Mary Beth and Bob leading this association, I think is going to be fantastic. We looked at them collectively and their skills really complement each other. And I think when we look at the unified association, having those two in that leadership role will really help move the association forward and ultimately, of course, lead to our goal of you know, expanding market share and increasing sales. We did a high level org chart uh, so folks can kind of understand, again, at a very high level, who will be responsible for what. Details on the staffing structure, of course, are gonna to continue to be developed during transition after an affirmative member vote. The high level structure outlined here, so you can kind of take a look at those basic high level roles and responsibilities. Yeah, and a couple of things for those of you that may be more familiar with uh, Bob Thomas because he's been around for a while. Any leadership position in NCMA, and he carries a pretty nice hairdo, I might add, as well. Those of you that don't know Mary Beth, you're going to find out that she's got a bit of juice. So uh, it'll be a great to have Mary Beth uh, on the staff representing some of the uh, ICPI maybe ways uh, as, as coming into this new organization. I think you'll be happy to see that uh, she's got a lot of good ideas. And again, like I said, a pretty good amount of juice to go along with it. So this is a high level kind of look at where uh, revenue and expenses will be in the new association. This is a pro forma budget developed based on expected revenue and expenses. And we have best practice targets for similar associations. So when we look at things like staffing and dues and just kind of the big high level items on both a revenue and expenses side, we're targeting those against uh, similar associations, putting those targets in place so we kind of understand where we want to be going forward. A detailed budget for the first fiscal year will be developed during the transition and it'll be based on the strategic plan, of course, for the Unified Association. Right here, this is preliminary. It's expected, obviously, over time that we'll find synergies between the two associations. We'll look for efficiencies and create more value for members going forward. Yeah, I, all I can say is I like the colors and it's good that the income wheel is a little bit bigger than the expense wheel. So that's exactly. <laughs> so meetings, I know this is something that is near and dear to all of our hearts. So assuming the member vote is in the affirmative, NCMA and ICPI will have co-located annual meetings in Kansas City in February. Assuming the member vote is positive, the mid-year meeting in August of 2022 will be the first meeting of the Unified Association. One of the main member benefits I know is that appeals to so many of us is the consolidation of meetings that will provide better opportunity for industry participation, networking, as we spoke to, reduce travel costs and time. And one of the things that this new organization really the strength of it is, again, that we're all be together at the same time and be able to interact with each other, bounce off ideas, uh, be able, again, to kind of feed off the energy of uh, both groups together. And I really, I think that's going to be a positive thing for, for us moving forward. So from a branding perspective, obviously, these names are near and dear to our hearts, right? We have a lot vested in them. At this point, we have not made any decisions on the new name of the Unified Association. Name, branding, kind of all of that will be done carefully with consideration of all member stakeholders and external interests. And that exercise will begin after an affirmative vote. So we wanna make sure, obviously, that we have an affirmative member vote before we kind of move forward with that process. The transition name will be the super catchy ICPI NCMA. And again, going forward, we will have a defined process to pull together kind of what makes the most sense for the Unified Association to really come up with a name and a brand that serves all member interests. Yeah, as Kendall said, it's important, I think, 
that we wait until there is a unified organization to come up with the name and really uh, you know what our direction is as far as you know uh, you know what what is what are we trying to aim for with name and vision and all that stuff. we really can't do that without the advice and input from all membership so what are the next steps well the First next step is uh, the membership vote. At this point, both the board of ICPI and NCMA have approved recommendation unification to the membership. Very strong support from both boards. The NCMA vote was 18 in the affirmative to one negative and one abstain. And the ICPI voted 20, the ICPI board voted 28 in the affirmative, three negative and one abstain. So again, both boards very, very strongly support the unification. And at this point, again, it goes to the membership. So the voting members of both associations will be voting in November. Please look for detailed voting information from the association or associations of which you are a member. In order to move this process forward, a two thirds majority vote of each uh, association must vote in favor for unification to occur. So one of the things that you should expect to hear uh, from someone in the near future uh, from the unification task group is a phone call just to give information, answer any questions that you might have about anything that we discussed here or something that we didn't discuss here. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen. We appreciate your time and attention. Uh, as always, please do go check out the Unification website and please stay on now because Steve and Dave are going to facilitate a Q&A session. Take care, y'all.